Great. Okay. Bye. Is that vodka, Jeff? What? Is that vodka? Um, not yet. <laughs> Although, I, you know, yesterday was 420. <laughs> so, okay. guys, I one, think person, I'm okay, one, one person got that. I think I'm going to switch the American flag around because while it's right side on my wall it looks backwards on the screen no it's no it doesn't to you it's fine on the screen it's fine oh. it's backwards on your screen it's fine That's on our screen it's, okay thank it's, you it just shows a mirror for you but then everyone else sees it correctly that way you can see if there's something on the right side you can fix it the left side you can fix it but that but, that is my left side and it's the okay as long as you're happy. You're <laughs> Debbie, you should have a way to just superimpose the flag on everyone's screen, right? Do you hear that, Sarah? <laughs> yes, that's... <laughs> um, as far as I can see, everybody's here except for um, Mayor Cohn. Are we simulcasting on Facebook? Not at this moment until you guys start. Until we start. Okay. So we will be simulcasting on Facebook. Yes. Okay. So if people have questions at the end, Gary will take them through Facebook, right? Or are we not quite at that point yet? I'm not on Facebook. No, but no. I can share the questions if people ask. All right. I think what you should do is for now to text the question to Gary. If anyone's okay. watching on Facebook and has a question at the end in like the public comment section or whatever, just text that, copy and paste it to Gary so he can see it. And then at some point, Gary will we'll get to the point where Gary's like also watching the face. Well, actually, Gary, on your phone while we're while we're doing this, unless you're on your phone now. Got my phone here, right here. So open Facebook and go to the page. And you can see the stream of the meeting. Do I really want to see the stream of the meeting? Yeah, because eventually, eventually, a lot of people, instead of like tuning into a local cable channel, they're going to tune into our Facebook broadcast, even though we're, forget about Zoom. Once we start meeting, you know, once we meet, go, get back together, meet in person, we're still going to broadcast this on Facebook Live, equivalent to like an open open meeting for the community. All right, I'm on the town of Rye. I don't see anything. What am Rye I Town Park. To Rye Town Park. You have to go to Rye Town Park. Yeah, but go I'm to, not streaming go, yet. Go to facebook.com slash Rye Town Park if you're not sure. All right. Sarah, uh, Pam Jaffe is looking for um, the credentials to get into the Park Commission meeting. And Bill Lawyer's calling. Hold on. All right, I'll forward it to Pam. Oh. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, call Sarah on her cell phone and she'll help you onto Facebook. I can't um, switch off oh, my hold phone. On. Hold on, what? Okay, so um, uh, Bill, have you have you liked Rye Town Park and Beach on your Facebook page? 
Yes. Okay. So in the lower left hand corner should be an icon. Am I saying this right, Sarah? Yeah. And the icon says um, it'll announce. It just says live. It well, says it will live. Say live, but it, or it's it not will live say live in a, in a minute. I just have the front page on it with the COVID-19 advisory. Is that wrong? You have to go to the Facebook page. I'm on townofryany.com. Lower left-hand corner. Yeah, no. It says like us on Facebook. Yeah. You know our parks department? Is the, um, You're on the Town of Rye website. Okay. You need to go to the actual below Facebook the profile page. picture. To announce the meeting is live, and then you click on it. Yeah, correct. We're not live yet. We're just getting ready to launch. Yep. Yes. Hi, Emily. Okay. Hi, Jeff. How are you? See you on Facebook. Bye. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hanging in. I'll 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 talk oh, to you later. Not good. Well, okay. I was on the town's website. Which, which website should I go? What does it right. say? Rye Town Park Facebook page. It's its own deal, not part of, not the town. Although you probably could link to it from the town's website, but it's Rye Town Park's Facebook page. Just search for Rye Town Park on Facebook. Says okay, right town park, and then where do I go? I, I'm on right town park, so on the lower left hand corner should be a as soon as we go live it'll it'll appear um gary before you came on benny mentioned that he has a hard stop at 7 15. yep i hope so hi ben hello gary how come your glasses don't do my glasses reflect light yes they yes do. they do Maybe we should go in the dark, shut the lights. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do it too. I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, are you, um, are you in twice? Oh, I see. The, um, that's Jeff. Okay. And it's uh, Josh. Got it. Okay. Is Fritz not coming? Fritz is not coming. He has a budget workshop today at the same time. Hi, Mayor. As far as I can see, everyone doing? is here. Uh, uh, so the only person is uh, Kathy. I'll look out for her um, her phone number. Okay, it well, doesn't work. Okay, but now I'm in the dark as I usually am. <laughs> now I can't see. <laughs> so I still can't get on the Facebook. I mean, I'm on the Right Town Park Facebook page, but I don't see any place to. Does it say the word beach under Right Town Park? No. Sorry. Does no. it say what? No. It says Right Town Park. Okay. There's one Underneath. thing that says Right Town Park Beach. Right. That's the page with the nice picture of the sunset across the top. No. The home page yes, of Right Town Park. I got that. Now I got it. 
Okay, just leave that open, split your screen between the Zoom meeting, you know, push it to the right and this one, but they both no, can got, be on your computer at the same time. No, I have my computer open, I have my iPad open and I have my, my iPhone open. Okay, fine, use your iPhone, that's good. Keep an eye on the Facebook page with your iPhone for now. Good. Everybody can do this, by the way. If you're able to split your screen between the Zoom page that we're all looking at, we look like the Brady Bunch, right? And then you can like just change the size of that. And you can have on the left-hand side, like I have the Facebook page open and on the right-hand side, the Zoom meeting communication uh, panel open. I've got them both open at the same time and I can see Facebook and then I can see you guys. It's much too complicated for me. I got my iPhone open and that's on Facebook. I have my computer open on the agenda and I have the Hollywood Squares. <laughs> Up in here. It's Hollywood Squares or Brady Hollywood Bunch. Squares. Yes. Right. Right. All right. Can we uh, start? I don't think anybody else is coming. Just give me one moment. I'm just preparing to stream live right now. By the way, I believe the um, the resolution for the drinking fountain has to be revised. Of course, we're approving it at a total cost of 7100 Is that correct? That's correct. I reduced it today. Yeah, but we're not paying that. The um, the resolution mentions that the Right Town Park, the Friends of Right Town Park, have raised seven thousand dollars to contribute to underwrite the cost. All right, going that... live in three, two, one. All right, are we live, Sarah? Floating. Anyway, I think that at the end of the resolve clause, you should say um, of which no more than $100 shall be paid by the right, by right Town Park Commission. I will uh, make that correction. We're live. All right. I don't, uh, I don't see it on my Facebook, but I'll take your word. Anyway, um, Welcome everybody to the Right Town Park Commission meeting of April 21, 2020. The flag is behind Debbie, so Debbie, you rise, we'll rise, and you lead us in the pledge today. Pledge behind you, Deb, I, I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. And, to America. and to the Republic for which it stands, which it stands. one nation, under God. God. Indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. Yeah. Okay. On Zoom, that is awkward. Josh and Paul, how do you guys do that? We don't. We decided that it was better to not do the pledge than to have everybody look at our crotches. That might be a good idea. Screens Josh, tilt. how about you? Screens tilt. <laughs> I I did a handstand while I did the pledge. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right, um, Debbie, uh, call the roll. Commissioner Salonitro. Present. Commissioner Hurd. Here. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yeah, he's here. Gary, refresh your uh, page that has the Facebook page on it. You'll see it right on the top of the Facebook feed. Just refresh. 
Commissioner Cohn? Here. Commissioner Falanca is absent. And President Zuckerman? Yes. Well, that's not working. Well, um, first item is adoption of the minutes for um, February 12th, 2020. I have a motion and a second. And uh, let me know if you have any additions or corrections. I move. Please. Motion, second. This is going to be awkward. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can I have a motion and a second? I motion. Second. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Um, our first resolution is for Bartlett Tree to control invasive, invasive species at Rye Town Park. Um, Debbie, you want to briefly say what this is about? Yes, at the last meeting, if you recall, we adopted a resolution engaging Pond Lake Connection to address the Phragmites uh, that are invasive species in our pond. And it is now time for the tree care portion of that work to begin. And the, uh, the, the firm that um, assisted us in submitting that grant is Bartlett Tree, and this uh, this uh, resolution uh, proposes to engage them for the purpose of actually doing the work that the grant was received for, and uh, this will uh, stretch out over uh, two or three years, and uh, be. Uh, uh, build to the park and to the town proportionately to the work that gets done. And how much is it a year, Debbie? It's uh, the, um, hold on, Hartland. Are you looking for the schedule? Yes. Yeah, so the first year, the total is 16,000. But again, half is at Crawford, right? Or some of it's at Crawford. Yeah, more. I would. I would think more than half. Oh, sorry. Ash and elms in year twenty twenty are sixteen thousand oaks. Right. In twenty. No, I'm sorry. This is. <laughs> in twenty twenty, ash at Crawford, um, and half the. Ash. And all the ash at Crawford and half the ash at Rye Town Park, um, as a half of the ash trees were done last year. Um, so that will be, pardon me, let me just close the door. So that's $11,130. Right. And there's an oak planting or an oak plan, which is in 2020 to monitor the oaks every month for signs of infection. And if infection occurs, remove affected trees. Um, that's $32,500 in 2020. And the vines in 2020 are has nothing to do with Right Town Park. There's okay. zero vines at Right Town Park. So a yeah. portion of the oaks will be at, are at Right Town Park. Most of them are at Crawford Park. As I, as I recall, um, Vic, you may have more information on that. Do you have a sense of proportion? Um, I'm gonna say 80 to 20. 80 at Crawford, 20 at? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion? Please call the roll. Commissioner Salonitro? Yes. Commissioner Hurd? Yes. Commissioner Rosenberg? Yes. Commissioner Cohn? Yes. President Zuckerman. Yes. Uh, next resolution is to acquire and install a water filling bottle with a dog bowl and drinking fountain at the park. Debbie, where is this going to go physically? 
this will go uh, essentially right against the north gate uh, building where the uh, the bathroom is. All right. Right off the promenade. All right. And as we discussed before the meeting started, the resolve has to be amended. Um, <clears throat> the total cost of $7,100, of which a maximum of $100 will be paid by the Right Town Park Commission. And with that, may I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Was that Benny and Paul? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> any, any further discussion? I know the, the Friends of Rye Town Park are providing $7,000 to this, and th this has been a priority of theirs to get a water fountain with a, especially a dog filling station. Just to clarify here, on the, um, attached to the resolution is a estimate for the, it uh, looks like plumbing? Yes. For $2,000, that's part of the $7,000? Yes. 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 Okay. And, I, and it's not to exceed. I've got every intention it will end up being a little bit less. <clears throat> Gary, I don't think anybody made a motion on the last resolution. On which one? The last resolution. You, you, you called for a roll call, but there was no motion made on that. Yeah, so, we did. You did? I, I don't have. No, Benny's correct. We did not. On, on which the one? The trees. Trees. I'll make that motion. Well, thank you. Second. All right. We we did have the roll call. So, um, so we have a motion and a second on the dog filling station, and let's have the roll call on that, please. Hold on, just a second. I can't get the motion. And um, that that was. Uh, Josh for the second, and uh, Benny for the for the motion. Correct. I think it was yes. me, Paul. That was on the tree. Paul I, yeah, Paul and I made the motion for the uh, the the fountain. I got that, and uh, on the the tree, Benny made the motion, and Josh seconded it. Mayor Cohen, correct. Mayor Cohen, pardon me. All right, are we set? Yes. I think we need to call the roll on this one. Commissioner Salamitro. Yes. Commissioner Hurd. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes. President Zuckerman. Yes. Uh, the next resolution is to approve retaining KF O'Connor Davies as our auditor. We've been on auditor for several years and nothing has changed. Debbie, the price, um, the small increases every year. Um, how does this price compare to last year's price? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. My understanding was it's actually slightly less because we are such delightful clients to work with. Well, that's always good. I don't know if being delightful is good, but less is better. We um, are, um, this, the point is that the, uh, the park commission used to be a lot more work to audit. And we have now streamlined systems and our accounting uh, such that it takes much less time and effort on the part of the auditors to audit us. So there was a, uh, um, about a 5% decrease in uh, their overall proposal. Motion and a second, please. Motion. This is, this is, this is really pulling teeth. All right. Let's second. get it set. I, I motion. Good. Paul first motion, heard, seconded. Thank you. Okay. If there's no further discussion, please call the roll. Commissioner Salonitro. Yes, I was just clarification. I was looking at that draft of the budget in segments, depending on how we go. Was there a decrease or a change in the, this uh, in the budget, or does it doesn't matter what we do on on starting the beach? 
this season, right? I, I will make sure that the numbers match up. It's my understanding that they do. Um, the uh, uh, Kathy plugged that particular number in. I'll double check before uh, we adopt the budget. Yeah, I thought it might have been a sliding scale. Okay. Yes. Commissioner Hurd. Yes. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes. President Zuckerman. Yes. Uh, the management and staff recommendations um, and the management report. Uh, I think the management report, I think was um, easy to see. Uh, the staff recommendations, I think Debbie, we need to go over that and get commission approval of it. Yeah, um, I would think uh, there, there are a couple of events or one in particular that I'm thinking of at the park that uh, Russ may want to report on. Russ? A uh, little help there, in particular, which ones? Oh, the, uh, the, the roof, the problem that we had with the roof at the, uh, the north gate. Yes, well, when we, when we opened the north gate um, office and bathrooms, we found that there had, part, there had been a partial ceiling collapse in the men's room and it was due to um, water coming through the roof and upon further inspection we find out that the uh, that whatever repairs were done however many years ago you know BR before Russ there was um, it was really kind of a it was a really really poor uh, repair job they mixed roofing um, uh, uh, what's the word? They um, they tried. They put they put roofing right. cement on top of asphalt shingles, which just makes no sense. They just tarred the roof. That's all. Tarred the shingles. Right. So, and I don't know how long ago that was, but needless to say, it was the wrong application. It was a, it was a poor job, and now you're seeing what the results of that are. So. The next step from what I understand with Debbie is to um, is to uh, report it to our insurance company and file a claim and then get some get a couple of bids to come in and re-roof the, the the building. Now if this has been done correctly we might have been able to get away with just putting another layer of shingles on top which like you would do at your home at your home but now I suspect that we're gonna have to go underneath and down to the sheeting Right, well, and see whether or not things are, you know, deteriorating. Once, once we investigate, we'll know what we have to do. Yeah. Thanks, what's your Rob. other, what, what's your other project you want on the seawall? Well, you, you, you could talk about the seawall, Russ. Well, it's just, just to report that they're vir it's vir the project is virtually complete. They said they wanted one more day to do final cleaning and power, power you know, power washing the whole area and stuff but I saw late this afternoon they were doing that they were doing that so um, whether or not they're going to come back tomorrow I don't know you know if there's still some stuff left undone but it looks to me as though everything is complete finally yep finally and um, just a very brief review of that um, we had substantial difficulty with the coping because the factory manufacturing it got hit with uh, some COVID problems, including the driver. And uh, a lot of credit to MTS for persevering and helping get the stuff delivered and installed. So finally, it is done. Anything else on that, Russ? Uh, no, not at this time. I'll just, we'll, I'll just. Yeah. I'll and there's a picture. I, I don't, we should send, I don't know if the, I saw a picture of it and we should send it to, the, to all the commissioners. Uh, the last picture of the completion. Yeah, I sent, I sent you pictures today. Okay. Yeah, they look great. Finally, it is done. Anything oh, else? That was a reverberation. Um, um, at this time, I'll just, I'll just. Yeah. Oh, there was a picture. We should send. I don't know if. Gary, I think you need to uh, turn the volume off on your other device. Which other device? The don't you? The Facebook. Okay. 
Yeah, they look great. Finally, it is done. Anything well, else? That was a little bit of a reaction. Um, um, yeah. yeah, that was a picture. Gary, I think you need to uh, turn the volume off on your other device. I did for the second time. Other device. Don't you? It's off. I hope. Okay, I turned mine off as well. It may have been nice feedback. It was yours, Jeff, not mine. I have X'd out the volume. All right. Um, Policy questions? Yeah, on the, the staff recommendations for the COVID-19, uh, is there any discussion that the commission wishes to have on that or accept them? Anybody? I'm just gonna, look through them again. I mean, my, I, my thought was that there's, it was so much that we, um, I thought we'd be talking about them more. Um, um, so did I. I, I thought we were going to go through them during the meeting actually. Well, then we could do that. Um, requests from not-for-profit organization for discounts um the staff is recommending no change from the 2019 policy which is a 50 percent discount to not-for-profit organizations and no charge to the communities schools first responders and religious observances um that seems you... right that seems right if if they can have the event if they they're getting to have the event, so let's just go with the, with no change. Um, request from religious groups to hold ceremonies in the pavilion on the, or on the beach. Recommendation is a continue of the 2019 policy, but in, in, in accordance with any uh, new COVID-19 related guidelines. So obviously we're not going to have religious ceremonies either at the beach or in the pavilion until uh, the governor lifts the emergency order. We uh, notified the family that we're supposed to have a wedding there next month. I don't know. Russ? Russ, you're muted. Yes, I know. Um, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't spoken to anybody. Will you follow up with Jose, please? Okay. I mean, I would be shocked if they thought that it was still occurring, but just to be on the safe side, we should let them know. Absolutely. Um, is there a date prior to which we should be refusing or canceling events? The first event booked for the season is a NAMI walkathon on May 16th and a wedding reception on May 17th. So is that the wedding reception you're referring to, Paul? Yes, it is. Uh, the recommendation is that all events prior to June 1 should be canceled. Yeah, I, I'd just like to say I'd like to make a policy. I don't know if I need to make a motion, but I think we do need to. It looks like there's only these two, but it should be a policy that at 30 days out, any event is canceled until restrictions are lifted. I agree yeah, that's 100%. That's what the policy is. We continue to cancel reservations 30 days out until the public con until public congregations of 10 or more people are permitted by executive order. Yeah, we just need to make so, sure we're doing that. Right, we are. Um, are we canceling the community conversation on my, May 2nd? The answer is yes. And we will reschedule that. Um, did we, I thought that I saw that on the agenda. Was that taken off the agenda itself? Still on the agenda. Yeah, we skipped right. it. So we, we, we kind of skipped that one but we're going to cancel that. Might as well um, Do you want to do it by motion? You uh, set the meeting by, by uh, resolution. Do you want to yeah, pass we Might as well. We'll jump back to that. Um, motion and second to cancel the community conversation. So moved. Second. second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, here's a big one. And we've had some discussion. I discussed this with, with um, Debbie previously. I also had conversation with Josh about this. Um, the community-wide permit is uh, sent in March. It's already April. Um, do we send the permit mailing without knowing when or if the beach is going to open? And the recommendation is that we suspend permits for 2020 entirely, except for honoring the commitment to the lifetime permit holders. Because simply we, we don't know what kind of season we're gonna have. If we continue, if we send out permits, uh, first of all, I don't know that anybody's going to want them. Uh, and as we go into the season, it becomes the difference between daily rates and the permit will get less and less. Obviously, if we start charging, uh, you know, like in June, then the value of a permit that is, is sent out now would decrease. So the question is, what does the commission wish to do about permits? Staff recommendation is no permits except for the senior permits, um, the lifetime permits with which we have a record. What, 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 what about not sending out the permit invitations uh, unless and until we get an opening date that makes sense. So we, we wait, we don't send them out, and we see when we can open and we do the math. That's fine. I agree with that. I, yeah. I personally don't think we ever need to send the permit invitations again ever. I think it's a waste of paper and a waste of money in postage. Um, there's no reason for us to be sending those every single summer. That's a huge amount of paper, huge amount of money, right? And it's not necessary. But to Josh's uh, point, I agree we should wait and see if and when it opens and then make a decision um, on potentially a, a prorated permit, right. depending on what the numbers are. Okay. All agreed on that. Um, so, um, given, given the, the short time frame in which we're functioning, once we understand, do you want to have a special meeting to make a decision about the permit prorate, proration? Well, we could do that. Make it's a lot speak. easier to have a special meeting this way than it is to gather in person. So we could, have a Zoom, we could have a Zoom meeting on fairly short notice and, you know, we could have one in the morning, we could have one in the afternoon. We could, we could decide that. Agreed, and it all depends on when the governor lifts the, rest, lifts the right. restrictions. Well, for sure, it, it's not gonna be lifted before May 15th. No, and, and Gary, as we had discussed on the phone earlier, I mean, it also, I, in my opinion at least, it also plays into what happens to the beach at Playland. Yeah. Yeah, well, we will be coordinating with Playland. Um, uh, we, you know, right now the, um, you know, they usually close down to clean the beach uh, anyway because they allow dogs on the beach. And right now, according to the, uh, the county executive, the dog, the dog pooping will continue further. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, so we're in agreement that we don't send permit applications out and meet to discuss it when the time right. comes. Okay. Right. And I don't think we're going to send them out by mail anyway. We could post them on the website of mm -hmm. the town and the commission and the city um, and let people know and do it that way. And I think we should have all the permits um, done, you know, over the internet anyhow and not in person. Perhaps, perhaps we could, uh, uh, the villages and the city could assist us with their um, 
communication system, their telephone, email, text, communication. That's out fine. To all the residents. That's fine. Maybe also put a couple of signs uh, on the office at the park so people can see that we're doing what we're doing or understand what we're doing. So it's been decided we're not going to do a paper mailing this year. We're going to do an electronic mailing and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, sure. All right, let's skip the how rest. Much, how much, just out of curiosity, how much money, Debbie, ballpark do we spend on postage and paper for that mailing each year? Well, I can't tell you off the top of my head. It's, it's within the, um, the budget line for uh, communications and printing. Okay, thank you. Well, how many, how many do we send out? Multiply that by 42 a cents. Lot. A lot. And we've got, uh, unfortunately, the, the mailing is duplicative because we send to every resident household in the city and the town. And then we also send to all the permit holders and uh, the data, the, the, the uh, so it's a lot. This, this so, might be a way for us to get out of that business as well for yeah. next year. I think, I think Paul is absolutely right. We don't, I mean, if we, we have to send out at least five, seven, probably 10,000, wouldn't you think? The, yes. the population of the city and town together has to be 60,000? According to Sarah, it's about $10,000. Yeah. Thank That's you. A lot of money. Thank totally you, Sarah. Sarah. All right. Everyone has email, even seniors. I think this is a great savings. Yes, yes, we do have email. We do. We who? We seniors. Benny and I. <laughs> Real. Oh. <laughs> yes. All right, let's get the rest. The, the next few relate to the mailing. Big issue. Do we continue to offer free parking until the stay at home order is lifted? I say Even yes. Even the staff is divided. I, I think say we should. Go. Me too. Can I weigh in on this just for a second? Sure. If we have people working at the park, but we should charge for parking. It's as simple as that. If we close the park down completely, chain across the entrance and lock gates, then you know we lock it down. But as long as we have personnel there, security, maintenance, park director, anybody, anybody working there, I don't, I don't know why we're offering free parking because it has to be patrolled, it has to be you know, organized. Well, the thing is, I, I understand that, but I, I don't think, I think if we're officially, like the beach is closed officially because of the uh, executive's orders, uh, executive order, uh, if we're not officially open, then we shouldn't be conducting business and collecting, uh, you know, those, those fees for parking. Uh, Benny, Benny yeah. we are open. Beach is open. That's I know we're open, but we're not the really. Open. Open. The beach is open. The only difference is people can't go in the water because we have no lifeguards. Is sunbathing permitted? I thought that was limited. Sunbathing no, is not permitted. Absolutely is it? permitted. All right. So how about a and reduced? It, and, and how, they are. How, how about a reduced parking rate? Well, we have a fee schedule, so whatever we uh, answer on this should relate to the proposed fee schedule that was also sent out to us, right? Yeah, I mean, my yeah. my view yeah. is that we should adopt the fee schedule, but the question of when to start to charge is up in the air. I just wanted to add that as long as Playland parking lot or Playland is closed and their parking lots are available, you know, I mean, we can try to charge, but we might find people parking there and walking over, which is, I mean, it is what it is. Um, the other issue relating to fees that I'm struggling with is um with respect to the revised fee schedule we agreed to um make resident and non-resident parking the same price yeah i, I would love to be charging non-residents more during this time or not charging residents and only charging non-residents but i know we have limitations with our um equipment 
You know, I, I, I agree it would be great to have a differential or the ability to charge non to charge non residents and not residents, but I don't know if technically there's a way to do it. Well, the only way to do it is if the residents register as residents and we've had some difficulty with that especially Porchester residents who don't want to register their addresses for uh, other reasons. And um, if you can't use the machine to establish residency, then you really need to have just the one rate. They should and be it's filling a lot out easier to minister too. And we've lowered, we've lowered the rates. Right. Um, so, I mean, my, when we get to that issue, my druthers is that we pass the parking and beach schedule now so that we have it as on record. We can always modify it later if there's a problem. You could but also they, they, do a, uh, you could do a resident read, if, if a resident saves their receipts or whatever, you could do a, a potential resident rebate at the end of the season without changing our point of sale system. I think Sarah's indicating to me Actually, I know she's indicating to me that the equipment 100% cannot, cannot scale this the way you want to scale it or, or customize it. Right. So, yeah, you, you, know, could, you could offer forget, a rebate, I guess. Our, our, our weekday parking fee is $5. How much lower do you want to offer it? That's for two hours though, right? Debbie, the parking fee of five dollars is. I'm looking. Two hours from Monday to Thursday. Right, right, for two hours, and then right. uh, all day, ten ten bucks. Oh, no, it's that assumes day. somebody's getting to the kiosk and doing their thing on the uh, on the. Uh, right, or they well, they could use the uh, the the parking app as well and pay to park. Right, gotcha. Okay. It, it just seems to me that to charge people during a pandemic for just walking around and maybe sitting down on the beach away from people just seems a little bit harsh or People are not doing that. They're bringing their families and they're setting up for the day. Well, some are, some are doing that and some are-, are I mean, I, I was there a couple of Saturdays ago and yeah, I, I saw people sitting on the beach and, but we're not providing services. There's no restaurants. I mean, there's no place to, to, it's to change or anything like that. People, people the are going into the water. In, in a few weeks. But we don't know that. The only thing I'm suggesting is if the restaurant opens, that might be a different story. But if we're gonna, if there's no services provided during the pandemic, it just- I think we are providing services, right? Russ, like what? We've we got people- No, there. We're, not provi we're not providing any services. Not, nothing, nothing, nothing tangible. I mean, we don't even have the bathrooms open. That was my, that's why yeah, I, that's, I thought. So, that, so that's why, I mean, given the fact that people can't even go to the bathroom there or, I, I, and to, to Emily's point, the, Emily, I don't see anymore, but um, Playland's parking lots are free. You know, it just seems to me that uh, there's no point in charging. But once the restrictions are lifted, I Jeff, know. I agree 100% we should start charging. But just given during a pandemic, I just don't and see how we do that. Commissioners, you do, need to, you do need to also understand that once we start charging for parking, we're gonna have to make sure that our, our lifetime senior pass holders don't get, because they don't, they don't wanna pay, and they don't wanna pay anything. They expect not to pay anything. So how do we differentiate? Have the problems that we had last summer been fixed? No. Yeah, in regards, in regards to what? No, I, in terms of the recouping of, of the lost revenue because of the computer malfunction. Yeah, the license plate readers, and then oh, the, okay. the whole. I mean, like this was supposed to be a seamless process, whereby if you park and you're not either uh, a permit holder with your license plate registered, or if you haven't put the money in at the kiosk, then you were going to get a ticket. Um, and the license plate reader was going to pick that up. And then last, last summer, there were technology challenges. And, you know, I know for the last six weeks, we've been in a pandemic, but 
why hasn't that been ironed out? We've been working Not for lack of trying. Debbie, you want to bring up up to date on that? Working, we've been working steadily at at um, addressing each one of the the, the pieces in the. Um, let's just say in the integration of the systems. Um, and uh, most recently Verizon um, put a mock-up of antenna in the tower building so that they could, and then had a photographer take over a hundred pictures of what the tower looks like without and then with the, um, the antenna so that they can establish for the, uh, for SHPO, the New York State Office of Historic Preservation where we need to get approval and also whatever approvals are required by the city of Rye um, to be able to go forward and put antenna in there. Um, we're also working with the same team to try to enhance this year's um, mobile uh, cell service. Um, and uh, we have received a proposal for um, for uh, park-wide Wi-Fi, but frankly, um, I just received it a couple of days ago. It's big, and it's probably not a, an infrastructure project we're going to take on now. Um, other than that, we're in touch with the license plate reading technology uh, vendor, and uh, they've committed to coming and working with us on that. Um, also, we have explored. Uh, we've started the process of ordering decals for our permit holders um, that will be matched up with their license plates to make sure that our rangers do not ticket permit holders, even if there's a problem with the technology. Has um, the vendor, Debbie, from last year, who we, I'm assuming, paid, um, who didn't do what they said they were going to do, I mean, are they still under contract or are they are they now out of the picture, just given the fact that, you know, everything that they installed didn't work? Did they just walk away? It's not entirely true that everything they installed didn't work, but there, it is certainly true that there are big pieces uh, that, that fell apart. I absolutely agree with that. Um, but of course, when, when we address the issue, it's, you know, I get a lot of that going on. Um, and nobody anticipated that the cell signal was so weak that, which was essentially a, a, a building block for the system. So we're actively working on the building blocks and uh, the, the, the way we pay the vendor, which is ITS, is through renting the, the leasing of the machines and we, had, we signed a, a, a multi-year lease. So yeah, they're still in the picture. So I wouldn't pay their lease going forward until they fix this, but that's just me. Yeah, the question of the cell signal is in the strength of the cell signal is something that would have been easily verifiable. And, and when, when we went through that proposal. process. Pardon me for interrupting. They, they went through that process. They, they tested the signal. They assured us that it was strong enough. That was, that was specically something that we checked. But well, yes. we did it. Given the fact we did that, what it, we that it to wasn't. Do and, and they were wrong. They were that's just right. wrong. So we shouldn't be paying them, period. Because we're losing out on revenue. We lost out a tremendous amount of revenue last summer. We're going to lose out on revenue this summer. So we shouldn't pay them, period. Well, technically, we won't lose revenue if we don't charge parking. But that's an aside. I, I um, see your point. But it's, I, I think there's an assumption that at some point, we're going to want to start charging No, for you're parking. absolutely right. If, if, in fact, we charge for parking, then the corollary to that is that if you don't pay your parking fee, you get a ticket. And, and that has to be followed up with. There's no question about it. I think that I, I would agree um, with Paul about sort of withholding or, you know, delaying payment, but only after we see towards the end of the summer, if we get up and running, the same problems arise. I'm but investigating Jeff, it make sense who to... was responsible for last year's snafu. If I can, if I can find a thing, you know, a point at which to point my finger at, or it's now very difficult because, you know, one technological entity is 
is saying the other one did it and they're, they're just point like Debbie said they're pointing their fingers at each other um, I'm trying to cut through it getting investigating all the prior correspondence and just trying to un, un, unravel the ball of string there it but just seems to me not, yeah this is Jeff this is the only leverage we has we don't have we don't want to wait until the end of the summer where we're going to be out more money for what does not, Debbie? What does, does you know, what does ITS do? Don't we need them? ITS is a systems integrator. Well, that, that's not integrating. Correct. Correct. So basically, we be, but we have to be very careful about withholding fees because, frankly, the first domino that fell was TD Bank's blocking of our merchant processor from removing their fees, which then started because the merchant processor used a different number to withdraw their, their compensation. And rather than notifying us, they shut the system down. And it, it, so it took us a while to figure out that the system was down and then get all the pieces to start back up again. So and that was on TV I, that. that was that part, yeah. But of course, TD will say, yeah, but they used, they used completely different numbers to withdraw the funds than they had given us. So um, okay. I've got to be very, I think we have to be very careful about who we don't pay because I don't want to push over a domino. Well, you know, we had, when we first started this, we had a very big meeting with all of these people involved. And we thought we were, you know, that everything was going to work okay. And I think, as soon as this uh, COVID thing is over, we really need to have a meeting again with all of those people and or do it, do it via Zoom like this. Just do, just do it via Zoom. You don't have to wait for COVID to be over. Just do it via Zoom. Let's not waste the time. Yeah, but I can't, I can't bring a gun to Zoom. I see anyway, your point. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on and, and, um, but let's go we back. We have to make the one decision. The one decision that has to be made. When do we start charging? Paul says not. My suggestion is let's wait until no charging until May 15th and let's see what the governor does the first week of May and then make a decision from there. I'm good with that. I'm fine with that. All right. Me too. So if I've heard you correctly, we're going to plan to charge, to start charging parking on May 15th. We'll have right. systems ready for that. And with regard to the beach, we're still going to wait and see. But I think that, Gary, the intention is that if the governor extends it past May 15th, we need to come back together and have yeah. another conversation about it. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah, you put it... Do you need to have a date definitive, uh, Debbie, or can we just say until further notice? Uh, no uh, parking will be waived what? until further notice. Well, once now, now that you've given us guidance, now we're going to go into the operational stage of okay, everybody. Here's our goal. Here's our date. Here's our timeline. What are the pieces that have to fall into place in order to get us operational by the fifteenth? Right. There's Mr. there's pieces right. that got to go in. Right. We've got to order those decals. We've got to you know, start the programming and, you know, read the riot act to the merchant processor, et, et cetera. So Understood. now we have a goal. We'll okay. work toward it. Okay. Fine. Um, um, there is, there is a sort of a larger question about getting the POS booze up and running, but we can discuss that later in the, in the meeting, if you'd like. Yeah, that that's with the, uh, the computer software. I mean, it's really clear that, you know, the, the volleyball program, the open water swimming program, all has to wait until further notice. The, um, <clears throat> I don't know that we need to, you know, two big events for the beach are later in September, so um, we can still plan to have them. The, um, the Metro swim competition and the Westchester triathlon. Uh, Metro Swim is the beginning of September and Triathlon is the end of September. Um, concerts, all of those things have to be on hold. Um, 
I really one, want your direction on this one. Are we not going to be planning programming for this season? I would like to have programming, but I don't think we're going to have any programming before June 1st at the earliest. So if you want to do things like the Sandcastle or the concerts, yeah, I would, I would see if, if we want to do concerts um, starting towards the end of June, do at least look to, into it. Do we want to consider any sort of alternative programming, coronavirus inspired programming? Um, what would that be, Emily? Well, um, I hesitate to indicate what I'm thinking about because I know it's something I think that um, the city of Rye is thinking about, and I, I don't, anyway. Um, socially distanced appropriate behavior. I guess I think I, there are. We could have a sing along. People standing six feet apart. Stuff like that, Emily? Yes, I mean, stuff like that, drive-in movies. Um, Jamie Jensen suggested the Lawn Chair Theater doing a cabaret that you could drive to and watch. I don't know. I mean, it does, it, it, it brings people together, which is what we're trying to avoid. Um, on the other hand, people are looking for things to do. I know, but it's, it's really hard to do social distancing when you have any kind of a concert. If you have 300 people in the, on the park, I think it's really, really hard to keep them apart. Yeah. <clears throat> just, I was just asking the question. Yeah. No, no, it's a good question. We all want to do something. You know those um, sumo wrestling balls that you can buy? They're like inflatable. Yeah. Oh. They're about three feet. So you know, <laughs> technically, if everybody's wearing one of those balls. It's like a sumo suit? Yeah, it's like a suit. I'm just kidding, but. <laughs> All right. Listen, Benny has to leave, so. Sorry. Um, one thing to consider, and I don't know that we need to do that tonight, but the consideration is limiting the number of people on the beach and this, you know, what kind of a method. Um, for example, residents only. If we're not going to issue permits, then there won't be permit holders. Um, well, we, you just determined that you will be issuing permits. They'll just be prorated. I don't think we said that. Did we say that? I, I didn't get that indication. I think we could do that. I think we, I think the, the suggestion was that we could do that. Um, depending on whatever, when, whenever the, the uh, governor's orders are lifted. Um, the other problem. Yeah, I remember Josh saying distinctly at that mm -hmm. time, we could look at what the difference what is between the, right. the, the cost uh, for a permit and the cost for daily attendance. Doesn't make any sense right. if they, if you issue a permit even for a hundred dollars and they say, I'm going to go to the beach three times and, you know, spend $30 or something. So people right. will have to make that determination and then, you know, we could look at it when the time comes and the time is not here. Um, with the permission of the commission, can we move on to the rest of the agenda? Um, the next one is the beach fees, uh, beach and parking. Gary, we didn't answer your question. You asked the question about limiting people on the beach. Right. You said resident versus non-resident. I think that would be a help to scale up their way of doing business. Maybe we should not worry about the attendance on the beach, but provide that staff can ensure that there is uh, social distancing being practiced. It'll be a first come first serve type of thing. Right, that was one of the recommendations in the, uh, in the report. Yep. Is that a good? Are we following well, the that recommendation with residents only, but I don't know how you, you know, I mean, that's one way to do it. I don't think you're going to be able to do that. 
And I, I think it just create more uh, anxiety by doing that. Um, yeah. uh, I think I that's think something that we should, we should think about, but I don't think we need to take any action tonight on it. Uh, let's move on to the the implementation of beach and parking fees. You all have it. Is there any problem with passing this resolution tonight? I, I you know, we don't have Fritz with us. And of all of us, I think Fritz has been most sensitive on behalf of his constituents to the fees. I hate to pass it without knowing what Fritz thinks about it. Well, to that extent, to that extent, Fritz, I think, supported these fees. And I had an informal discussion with him when he told me that he wouldn't be at the meeting, you know, and he was basically in support of everything. Uh, but I, I'm, I understand your point, Josh. Um, I would just, in case we need to, to institute the fees, I'd rather have it on record that we've passed it. We can always modify it. We can modify the fees at any time. It's not a problem with that. I mean, I guess my only question is why, if we're going to have to have a meeting when we're going to plan to reopen and send out mail or, or not send out mailers, but whatever, I mean, just procedurally, is this just like a check the box or is there a reason we want to get the fees in place now? We, we actually already started the process of programming. So that, that can't be done overnight. That takes some time. Programming what? The parking, the pay stations and the, oh, okay. uh, and the parking app. And also getting signage produced is, uh, there's, there's a lead time for that as well. Can, so can, we, we can, can we do this? Can we vote on this? Uh, I think probably everybody is, is inclined to approve this, but ask you, Gary, to reach out to Fritz and just get confirmation. If he's unhappy and wants to have a discussion, then let's figure out how to have a Zoom discussion and what to do about it. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I just have one question for clar for clarification. You know, it, uh, this is a simplified simplified version of beach and parking fees. It says beach access is all day. I think we need to put hours because there's always been that caveat where folks like to get on a beach after a certain hour. And I know we had uh, um, a fee related to after 6 p.m. I think it was. So what are the hours that these fees will be collected from when to when? Because I think we need to have that. Just saying all day gets a little arbitrary. Understood. So certainly 9 a.m. is the is when we open. Um, when we close is uh, dusk, essentially. Um, Russ, so um, do you want to weigh in on this? I mean, we've it's basically at, at some point, given the sun, it's seven, and at other times it's eight. Well, the, my question actually, Russ, before you get, my question is when do we stop charging for beach access? Because we have a 6 p.m. to close discount for parking, but we don't have anything that resembles a, a time for beach access it was being my less after a certain time. It was my understand. I understand your question, Betty. It's my understanding that we would stop charging for, for the beach at six o'clock. Okay, so we'll just clarify that on this on this uh, chart. I'm looking at the beach and parking fee permit holder park and go. Is yep. that what everyone's looking at? Yep. Yeah. Okay. We can clear. We can clarify that. All right. Good. So, I think somebody to come at seven o'clock at night and have to pay ten, fifteen dollars to get on. No. Yeah. No, we, with, we, with the exception that was, that was of, a problem last year right and yeah. with, with the exception i would say of uh fireworks nights where we we charged until nine as long as there's clarity on the document that we're voting on then i don't have a problem with that i just don't want any confusion or any arbitrary decisions no, that's forward. fine 
Motion, Benny? So, yes, I'll make the motion. Second, Paul? That we talked about. Sure, why not? Second. Okay. <laughs> Paul the roll. Mr. Salonitro. Yes, subject to the discussion with Mr. Fritz Falanca, as we discussed. Uh, Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes, subject to the Fritz discussion. Commissioner Hurd. Yes, subject to what we discussed. President Zuckerman. Yes, and I will speak with Fritz. Um, I have spoken with him in the past. I will refresh that conversation. Um, next item, 5.7, is upgrading the point of sale, workstations. Uh, Debbie, you want to go over this? I mean, this is an expenditure item. None of us really want to spend the money. So tell us why we need to. According to Computronics, the workstations on which our point of sale is loaded are all old, quite old, and operating on Windows 7 operating system and are not capable of being upgraded to Windows 10 which means that they are no longer supported by Microsoft and they are a uh, security risk. So if we open our point of sale, which would be needed if we charge for beach admission, then we must upgrade our workstations. If, we, if the beaches don't open and we will not be opening the beach booths, this is not something we need to spend now, it, but it will need to be spent when we do open the beaches. How much lead time do we need? Two to four weeks. Can I ask a quick can I ask a quick question? Is it possible at all that we limp through this for one more year? Seeing that we really have no money. Can we limp can we get by for one more year? My concern with that is is the Windows 7, which can be breached because it's not being um, you know, fixes are not fixed by Microsoft. That, that's we do have three tablets which can function as point of sale machines. So I'll ask you the question, Russ. Can you get by just using the tablets? Can you re ask that question? You broke up. Yes, we have, I believe, three tablets. We could even buy a few more. Those are not working on Windows 7, and they're new. So can you get by just using the tablets at the beach entrances? Um, I don't know. I, I can't answer that question because I really don't know. But I, it, it seems like it's a, it's a possibility. But can you answer my question? Which Whether, is? Can we limp by for one more year? I'm not willing to risk a cyber breach because we're making this decision. That, okay, that but, doesn't seem to be smart. But does it, I'm not, again, I'm not an IT person, but just the fact that we're running Windows 7 doesn't mean we can't have um, a robust protection software on our thing. You know, it's, it's that would be up to Computronics to determine, Russ. Um, what I see on this, um, <clears throat> if we want to save money, perhaps what we could do is eliminate the disaster recovery so so hardware and the firewall software. No, 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 you don't want to remove the firewall software. I was going to suggest removing the DR hardware. And Debbie, okay. I like your idea of moving to tablets. I don't know why we wouldn't do that to begin with uh, on a go forward basis permanently. They're a lot easier to uh, protect over the winter and, um, and at night when they're not being used. You know, what, if, if they can be used, tablets are used at point of sales 
all over the country in uh, restaurants and you know and other stores. Um, I don't know if if you can run the the right software on it. I don't know why we would just, just wouldn't move to a tablet right. permanently. Then, based on that discussion, let's pass this item over. Uh, we'll come back next next month on it. And <clears throat> Debbie, you'll talk to Computronics about using tablets, yeah. um, yep. either the existing ones or buying one or two more, which are considerably less expensive. Um, We'll skip over the disaster recovery hardware and figure the firewall software in uh, when we get whatever equipment that we're getting. Okay, agreed? Yep, well, I can live with All that. Right. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, MTS <clears throat> to regrade Rye Town Park Beach. Uh, Debbie, go over this uh, briefly for the commissioners. Yeah, the, um, every year uh, that we open the beach, uh, re there's a, a significant expense in regrading the beach. Um, this year, we would have preferred not to do it at all. However, um, the way the sand has moved over the winter, it is, it is now possible for a not very tall man to stand under the sand and grab the, um, the deck of the restaurant. It's that high. So, and also the, uh, the sand near the, uh, the seawall is extremely low. In fact, uh, various pieces of metal that we didn't even know were there were unearthed because the sand had eroded. So we, um, we uh, got an original set of proposals for regrading the beach that were north of $45,000. Uh, we went back and said, no, 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 no. We need something, this is an austerity budget. Um, what do we absolutely have to do? We got uh, two more sets of proposals, and uh, one was for um, thirteen thousand and like thirteen thousand five hundred, roughly, for half 13, the beach. Thirteen seven. Thirteen seven. Thanks, Russ. Thirteen seven, and then uh, MTS submitted a proposal for fifteen thousand flat for the entire beach. So from a, a uh, best value perspective, which is part of our procurement policy, the decision, the recommendation is that we go with MTS. And they'll do it right away. Their equipment is, their, their equipment is already on site. Anyway, that's the story. Uh, any other discussion about it? It's, it's just work that has to be done, and the price is, considering the circumstances, reasonable. Debbie, no this isn't going to result in us having to purchase more sand anytime no. soon, right? Okay. Zero sand. Good. No, we're not, we're not buying any more sand. We're just moving the sand around. Okay. Regrading. Um, motion and a second, please. Motion. Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes. Commissioner Hurd. Yes. Commissioner Salonitro. I blacked out for a while. I, I don't know what the motion is for. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was trying to run two Zoom meetings at the same time, and that didn't work out very well. What are we voting on? Benny, multitasking. Very good. Trying. Regrading the beach, Benny. Say again? Regrading the beach. Oh, we have to. Yes. I vote yes. President Zuckerman, your vote. Yes. Um, the next two are for professional grant writing services. And uh, Josh and I have been discussing this with Debbie and Emily and um, regarding capital work. Um, the proposal here is just for the grant writers. Um, I asked Debbie to look at the contract with Millennium and we have a 30 day uh, exculpation clause, a 30 day out. We can cancel on 30 day notice. This is a monthly retainer. So I know the, I'm, I'm talking about uh, MTS first. 
the monthly retainer uh, is for Rye Town Park and Crawford Park both, or actually the Town of Rye and and Rye Town Park Commission. Um, the the advantage with this is that we can see the results of grants outstanding. We are waiting to hear for what, three grants, Debbie, that they applied for? Yes. All right. And I would like- No, I'm sorry, four grants. Four grants. And yeah. I, would like, I would like to retain them going forward, but with the caveat that if they're not gonna produce results, we'll terminate them um, midway through so that the, the monetary obligation will be considerably less. And of course, uh, keeping the city of Rye's concerns, um, we, we will minimize as much as possible the match fund uh, and, and go after grants that we, we think are reasonable and that are um, doable and um, that we can uh, that we can all live with. Let, let, let me just comment, if I may. Having a millennium around for, say, purposes of helping us get what may be available in terms of federal grant money that doesn't require match or that doesn't require significant match seems to make sense. But as a city, we're facing a situation where just as, well, just as the park, uh, the town and each of the town's constituent entities doesn't know what its income is going to be this year and doesn't know what the income recovery picture will be over coming years, we're not going to be able to support grant applications that have material matching responsibilities attached to them. We're reevaluating our entire capital program, and we're going to probably be shelving projects that we've been planning for for years, but we're, we just don't see how we're going to have the money for them. So that we, we, we will need to apply the same approach to the, to the parks planning and we'll need to be very, very careful about the grant applications that we see the commission committing to. And that seems to be an important part of the consideration of Millennium's mission. And I'd like that to be a part of the consideration of Millennium's mission. Gary, maybe, maybe that's what you were suggesting, but I really wanted to spell it out. Yeah, I you know one of the things that they've been working on is the COVID COVID nineteen response, which apparently doesn't require a match. Um, the as I say, we're they wrote several grants for us. We're waiting for the results. Um, you and I have had a discussion about the parking lot. The only major the only major um, match program that I see at the present time would be the reinstitution of the parking lot. And that, that discussion we don't have to have for a couple of months yet to see where we are. Um, so with that in mind, that's what I would like to go forward and hire them. And as I say, we, if, if they're not gonna perform, if we don't get the grants that, that we've already applied for, then, um, they're we, not we, they're not going to be proving their value and that we will uh we will terminate the contract we, which grants are out there gary what what applications are hanging out there debbie has debbie has that list uh we have two two grants to the aarp um one for the well, park for the town, the town. Right? well we have one for each okay. there's a twenty thousand dollar grant for right town park for um, assistance in creating the ADA path from the promenade to the bathhouse, which we will, if, if awarded, will, will help us match the uh, requirement 
from uh, both from CDBG and also from parks. And so what are the C CDBG and parks require? Where where is that money going? What are those grants for? There's a seventy. There's a uh, one hundred thousand dollar grant from CDBG for the ADA ramps and path, and there is a three hundred thousand dollar grant from parks. Um, for ADA accessibility, which we are applying first to the ramps and the path, and then with whatever m funds are left over, uh, we would apply that to the bathhouse ADA accessibility. And okay. um, I think I mentioned uh, Steve Otis is applying through the dormitory authority again for another $250,000 which would satisfy our, again, our local match for the, um, for both projects. That, that, that will not most likely require any match on our part, and we'll apply that to those same projects. So so that, those, those, those projects, I'm sorry, Gary, be, being the ramps and a path. Ramps and path, yeah. yeah the, the ramps and the, the accessibility project, the, the ramps and the bathhouse. A, but the bathhouse projects are bathhouse exterior is a two mil two million plus project and the interior is more than a million and a half. But we're not so, but we're not going to do that. The exterior is not part of this. That would okay. require a new CFA CFA uh, application, and the interior we would scale down. To just do the, to do whatever work we can do with the money available, the bathrooms primarily, not necessarily making the, the permit office accessible or doing some of that other work. In other words, we'd scale back so that we're, it's not a million dollar project anymore. Okay, um, I I would be very eager to support the ramps and would certainly support, support that with the Rye City Council. I suspect Emily would as well. Um, work on the bathhouse, I think we really have to understand better before I could say certainly that I, I support it in this environment. The, the truth here is for both the town and the city that if we don't get to open, it, if we don't get to have an appreciable part of the season here with income, essentially the town and the city will be bearing the operating expenses of the park, such as they'll be, without offset by revenue. So there's that beside the expenses that we, the city, have on our plate otherwise. Well, we, we understand that, but right now we don't need to make those decisions. We just may need to make the decision on the grant writers. And as I say, we're not going out for things we haven't gone out for before and for which money is available. I, before and money is available, we're in a different world, Gary. We're, we're, I'm, we're I'm far, well aware we're, we're, we're in a different from, world. We're far from before. Well, as you say, you're supporting the ramps. As far as the bathhouse interior is concerned, um, we don't know what, what's going to happen. That's another decision. That's a decision that'll be made and money would be expended uh, in 2021, not in 2020. And uh, we, we, may be, we, may, we, we may be in a for real recession here. We don't know where we are financially. I'm aware of that. I'm well aware of that. But as I say, we are, um, we don't know if any money is going to be available to do the bathhouse. We know that we're doing the ramps. The bathhouse is something we're hoping to do. And that's a decision that would be made later on. At the present time, we don't even intend to apply uh, through CFA for additional grant money there. So Good. we're, Okay, so yeah. we're not looking. We're not looking to do that. What we're hoping to do is to take the money already available and agreed to, and we're hoping. And I keep using the word hoping that the cost of the ramps will come in considerably less 
than the original estimate because the project was redesigned. And we have preliminary indications that the cost of the ramps will be several hundred thousand dollars less than the original estimate, which means that we will have money available without making any other grant applications to do something like the bathrooms, but that's a decision for the commission to make at a later date, not now. Not until we actually get bids in on the ramps and see what the numbers come in to be. So okay. that's a so, decision. So we're saying probably to come back to the, that's, to come no, back to the grant, to come back to the grant writers right. or, or the grant searchers, we're going to use them in a focused way. And yes. we're, we're going to be very mindful of concerns about going after grants that have significant matches. That is correct. All right. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, and as I say, just getting, getting back, I, I'll violate the first rule of, uh, of being in a courtroom. When you get a yes, walk away. Um, but the, just to reiterate, uh, we're not gonna know anything about the numbers until probably the early summer. So we're not gonna be making any decisions uh, until then and things will be much more clear. So with that, let's, um, we'll go in reverse order the uh, proposal for, to renew the contract with Millennium. May I have a motion and a second on that? Paul, Benny, so moved, Josh, so moved. Emily, motion and a second on Paul, Millennium. I think, well, I think Paul moved. I saw Paul I didn't move. hear a second. <laughs> so moved. Second. Emily, second. I'll second. Okay. Where'd Benny go? Benny had to he drop off. He dropped? Yes. All right. All right. Uh, call the roll, please. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes. Commissioner Hurd. Yes. President Zuckerman. Yes. And the contract with Helen Thurston. Motion and a second, please. So moved. Josh? 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 <laughs> Reluctant second. Okay. Call the roll, please. Debbie? Yes. Uh, uh, Commissioner Rosenberg? Yes. Commissioner Cohn? Yes. Commissioner Hurd? Yes. President Zuckerman. Yes. Um, do we have any comments from the public? Anything on Facebook? Hearing none. Going once, going twice. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> yes. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you.